everybody. We're here at uh, Caribbean Collection. Welcome back. We are so we happy. <laughs> it's a big show today, as you know. <laughs> and our first guest is Pete Ross. Peter Ross. And there he is. Hello. And Hi. Pete is, uh, I'm, 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 I'm looking, Pete's actually been on some of our shows before. Oh, oh. boy. I got some news for you later. I got uh -huh. to tell you about too. Yeah. Oh, great. A, great. Yeah. Because uh, I used to, I hosted uh, Liquid Lunch about two years ago, and I uh, invited um, my favorite singer in the world, Kalina Raquel, on. A very a gorgeous lady who's a great musician. She's written and sung and composed seven albums and actually done some of her own videos. So she's a very talented lady. And uh, so I had her on, and uh, that was the first person that I sort of brought on. And uh, I did some, uh, I did uh, MD Leonga, and I did a oh. few guys. You remember that whole art thing that you were doing? And yeah, I did a few. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dude. Oh, it's I funny. Did, did, we we got to say because we watched, because yeah. we had MD Leonga here oh, like, uh, okay. last week or the week before. Okay. And then we watched some of his videos yes. from the Raw Artist thing. Yes, and yeah. guess what? You're yeah. in it. You're of in course. the video. <laughs> Clapping. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of pretty girls there that night. <laughs> I was happy. I was happy to but be can you there. I had a us? press pass. You know, I was all, oh man, I'm cool. You know, I had a pair of Did you suede have... boots on, and I thought I was man. I thought because I just because I just gone out and bought these new boots, right? And I was like, man, I'm gonna. You know. So it was a, it was a cool time. It was fun. I, I like being here at that channel. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I've met a lot of interesting people. Uh, Hugh is a kind of a guy. He's kind of a he's kind of a talisman. He brings people together, and he's good at that. So I enjoy that very much, and uh, you know, I mean, it's a. Uh, I did a little bit of radio and TV uh, in my. I worked at Cable Ten in Scarborough. I did the Futures program. I completed that. That was sort of the first training program I ever completed, and then I did a little bit. Uh, I did a year of radio and TV, um, but I was quite a social social butterfly. So I have to, you know, you know how you know how we always go. Well, I didn't do this because you know. No, that was like not not doing my two years at. At uh, Centennial College was kind of my fault. I was I was partying and I was dating someone and I was having a good time. So I didn't really. <laughs> yeah. But but I paid off. I paid off all the money that I owed to OSAP. So OSAP's <laughs> watching. I paid you every penny. Okay, and so we're good. So, okay, well, Pete, so we want to ask you uh, where sure. do you come from? Well, I was born and raised here in Toronto. Uh, I was born not too far from here at uh, Women's College Hospital. That's where I was he's, born. He's going into real good detail. I mean, where's That's your where background? Well, your parents well, and your background. Well, okay, but where am I from? I am from Toronto, Ontario. I was born and raised here. But my father came here in 1960. Uh, he came, uh, he had already worked as a, um, uh, for the government in Trinidad. And he had already worked as a, uh, as a news reporter for a small newspaper where he came from. And uh, in Trinidad, which is Manzanilla. And he came here in 1960. And uh, he started to work. He started to go to school at a place called Sir George Williams, which merged with Loyola, which is now Concordia. It was an English speaking because in those days, Montreal was 60 to 70 percent English speaking. Quebec yes. was mainly French, but Montreal was very, very English. Mm -hmm. And so and the French people were kind of on the second level there. And so he so he loved Montreal. And uh, so his introduction to Canada was Montreal and great culture and you know, working in being a university student, there are people from all over the world. Mm -hmm. And there were, you know, there were women, there were Canadian women, there were women from Ethiopia, there were people from Africa and the African students, they got money from the government. So they were well dressed. I mean, these guys had suits and West coats and they had cars. And, and so the African guys actually picked up more women than anybody else. So they, for real? Oh, they picked up women like you wouldn't believe because they were in 1960. You know, people wore suits and ties and jackets and sweaters and all, and these guys were well dressed. They picked up all kinds of women, and there was a little bit of friction between the 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 African students would call the West Indian students a uh, uh, mango eaters. You are mango eaters, you know. So there was like there was, <laughs> <laughs> there was this friction between them, you know. So it was kind of funny, and uh, but he loved, uh, you know, he worked uh, as an orderly. And, and it was tough because they would have to work through the night and, and go to sleep. And they, they, would, they would have to go to sleep in the day, uh, or, or sorry, uh, go to school in the day, get home at like four, sleep till like 10, and then go to sleep and then work all night. And so um, when they worked at these hospitals, 
the white nurses were really, really cool because what the white nurses would do is the white Canadian girls, because there weren't many black people in Canada, especially these guys with these funny accents. So, so what they would do is they would, uh, they would, um, they were, they were orderlies, right? My dad and his buddy. So they would write, they would write their name and number on a piece of paper, and slip it into their pocket when they weren't looking, and they get home. Hey, who's Susie? Okay, I'll give her a call. You know, what, wait, so, wait a second. You're <laughs> saying you're saying the white Canadian nurses would give their phone numbers? Oh, yes. To the to these West Indian guys who were working there, who were students, you know, and uh, and so it was fun for them. They had, but uh, but uh, yeah, there was there was friction between them and the black Canadian uh, nurses. Mm -hmm. So there would be friction between, which is kind of sucked. But but he liked um, uh, his time in Montreal was kind of what made him because he worked very hard to finish because he didn't have the kind of money that they have now. So you had to work and then you had to pass and then you had to show your passing grades to the to the to whatever the immigration or the commission and then they would let you stay. You know because what happened was a lot of guys they wouldn't pass or or whatever happened or they fell in love with a girl and they would get married you know all of a sudden when it's time for their review to come up their visa to come up they oh i'm in love i'm getting married so they get married to a canadian woman and stay so what happened so, to you pete <laughs> no that's not what happened i was i was born here that id back here so i was born here no i mean is that how you came to be here no no no, no. my dad actually no it's a funny story my dad went back to trinidad after he graduated from school so he went back and he was sick to death of it when he went to trinidad he was there for nine months he ran screaming out of the country couldn't stand it because he'd been up here four years and life is so different here especially in those days but the west indies was i don't even think the west indies had television at that point not that that's the big thing but it was a totally different so so he came back to canada worked at frontier college in northern alberta near the peace river teaching uh teaching uh, uh laborers the basics of reading, writing, and arithmetic, because a lot of them couldn't read and write. So he did that. He dated a Ukrainian woman up there. Uh, and uh, and then uh, he he put his leg through a, through some kind of a trestle, and it twisted his knee, and that was his first Ouch. knee problem. And mm -hmm. so and so they, they asked him if he wanted an operation. He said, no, he just, just let it heal. So he let it heal. And then uh, he came to Toronto in 66, did his teaching diploma, and then uh, he met my mom. Was it in late 66 or it might have been in the 67 already i think he was already in 67 when he met my mother they met at a party of west indian the west indian community uh, back then there was a place called the whiff club and it was like the big club at the time and it burned down you know uh it was a west indian club it burned down the whiff the whiff club that was what the whiff called. it's a very very <laughs> famous was that in toronto yes it was on young street <laughs> look at look at look at he was looking was at on, me it was on young street whiff. Oh, okay. yeah, but it was maybe only around people, for a little maybe, while. Maybe my uncles yeah. and them. Know yeah, they, they would probably know if they were. So then uh, they got married in 67, and uh, my brother was born in 68. Uh, my dad taught it. He taught in Windsor, Ontario. Uh, he taught in Windsor, Ontario for three years, and uh, that was where he started. And uh, a Forrester Collegiate. Back then, you had to have a suit and tie, and you had to, uh, you couldn't, you had to be married. You couldn't have a woman with an illegitimate child so he got married. so obviously you know so my mom and dad were married a little bit before that and then uh you know and uh so he he was a teacher that's what he did that's what he loved to do and uh then he came to toronto and uh, my mom was a nurse mm -hmm. she started working out in the in the mental hospital in barbados in barbados because in barbados. because because <laughs> because because darlita is from barbados <laughs> So my family's was, from Barbados yeah, Barbados because they would correct Barbados. you right on the mark. Yeah, Barbados. My mom, <laughs> my mom was from Barbados, and she came here and uh, she uh, she she was first in Red in Pinocchio, Alde Pinocchio, Alberta, which is near Red Deer. Then she moved to Godrich, Ontario, and she was dating a guy there, a white Canadian guy there. And then she moved to Toronto, well and. Uh, <laughs> And then she and then and she then met here, my dad. And then here comes Peter Ross. But Pete Ross, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people are like, what's he talking about? You know, but he sings. He yes, does do. a lot of you know we've, we've heard him sing. <laughs> I do lots of things. We've heard him sing. <laughs> why, why I do lots of, I'm like an amateur that? singer, you, right? I mean, what can I say? I have fun. I have fun. So I do lots amateur. of things. Yeah, I do sing. Oh, he's an amateur. You think? Well, he's in uh I'm not saying he's not getting paid for it. So uh -huh. technically I am he an is amateur. an amateur. Yes. 
And yes. uh, no, but we got him. Uh, he, well, he comes here Friday nights, and yes. we uh, jam it out, and we yeah. are happy to have Pete come and sing Thank some you. songs, right? Yeah, Pete? yeah, and, I like singing all kinds of stuff. So you know, the one thing I've got to say about Pete, you know, uh, uh, because I, I kind of joking earlier, but not really. Like Pete knows a little bit, at least a little bit, about everything, and you can almost ask Pete any question about anything, and he can go on and on for 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 a long time about it it's a little Canadian bit of a curse music. people it's a little bit of a curse why is guys. it a, why is it a curse well, because you see the thing is kids usually they think okay i'm gonna remember long division or you know algebra and like i remember lots of other things my parents were very frustrated it's like how can you remember all this stuff but none of your schoolwork you know there was a little bit of well, a you know and was, you know you, my, you my, my mom and dad were a little were a little disappointed in me no, well, but um, you always. moved out. That you moved to um, Brazil too, right? Yes, I lived in Brazil. Uh, I, the first time I lived there, two separate times. I lived there in uh, 1999 and 2000, and uh, that was when I first started to learn to speak the language. And I, uh, I had a girlfriend named uh, what was her name? Joelma, who's a beautiful like, brown skin, uh, black lady that I went out with for a little while. And then I was living in the house of this woman. Who uh, who was a cab driver? She had somebody drive a cab for her then, and she she owned uh, she owned uh, an apartment, and I lived there, and I taught her English every day, and it was very frustrating. But I learned a lot because this woman could not speak English for the life of her. Like hello, hello, <laughs> you know, she just couldn't. But she's a wonderful woman. Uh, Anna was a wonderful woman, and uh, she was beautiful. She was like she was in her early fifties, but she was absolutely she had a beautiful body, and she was very and she was a spirited lady, you know, but uh, I kept it. I, I tried to keep it professional, you know. We need more details. Living in the house of a gorgeous spirited, woman. Spirited, <laughs> spirited. I don't know about woman. the spirited thing. She had, a, she, had a, she had a strong libido, but I tried to keep it, you know, like I was like, look, man, I don't want to get any trouble oh, here. So, I you know, but she, uh, but we, but I, I lived, I lived in one room of her house and she was beautiful. She was a beautiful lady. And uh, she, she, uh, she was just she was an attractive person and uh, but it didn't work out after a while you know you kind of get on each other's nerves and stuff so I moved into like a rooming house and uh, then I met uh, Daniela who was uh, my Italian girlfriend she was an Italian woman from uh, from Florence and so we dated for I lived with her for quite a while I lived with her for a while and then uh, yeah I mean it was that first trip was sort of getting to know Brazil and stuff like that we went to <laughs> and Brazilians. <laughs> Yeah, and, Brazilian, and all yeah. different kinds of people <laughs> where we're kind of see right here now. Sure, everybody, sure, everybody, women, you know. You know Pete, I think Peter got around <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. And so, yeah, one time, oh, there's a good story. One time, I was working, um, I was working in another city because these people had said, "Listen, if you come to this city, it's a city called Givinopolis," and uh, and it was in the same state of Minas Gerais. So I was working there. And uh, I was starting to work there, and I was working for this small school. It didn't work out, but they wanted me to stay there and be the house teacher, and they were going to give me room and board and so much. Just, and uh, and uh, so we went into this place. It was called Cabaret. So that the guy says to me, Toninho, he goes, "Hey, um, se quer se quer ir pro uh, se quer ir pro desse pro esse, pro esse lugar chamado Cabaret? Tem tem mulher, tem striptease, which means, hey, this place called Cabaret. There's a little striptease. Oh, it's a striptease place. So we went in there. It's a little stage, you know, so. Oh, that's pretty cool. We're sitting there, and these two women. So he's one sitting with him, one sitting with me, and there, and he's kind of looking at me like this. I'm like, what's he looking? At? So then, so then one of them starts stroking her hands up and down my leg. I'm like, oh, cabaret. That's what they mean. <laughs> you know, so, so you know, what? big song, make a long story short. It was a different place than I thought it would be. What kind but, of place uh, was it? Uh, <laughs> let's just say. Uh, Let's just say it was a uh, you know you know the animal song right. I don't have to go into that. But yeah. We might play that tonight. Yeah, we might play that. <laughs> so yeah, it was kind of it was kind of fun. It was kind of a fun experience uh, there, and uh, so I left. Uh, I came back. Um, I came back uh, in. Uh, ooh, I came back in um, October two thousand, and I came. I came back then, and my father was he was sick with uh, he had. He, he had um, kidney, he was on kidney dialysis by then. So he was sick. And uh, he was, 
he wasn't dying, but he was he wasn't in good spirits. You know, he had yeah. he he was a guy who I mean, my father was a very very intelligent man. He went through school. He did a lot of things in his life, and uh, one of the great things about my dad was that he could he could do six or seven things at once. He could sit watch a football game. I remember when I was a little boy in the seventies. He'd be sitting watching a football game on TV, talking to my mom, telling my mom about her what she had to do for nursing school and uh, he'd be marking papers talking to me watching the game and doing he could he was like a perpetual motion machine he had such he had such great um what do you call it uh, discipline that he could do six or seven things at once he was a fantastic guy in those ways but he he had he had a large family he had nine brothers and sisters and a massive amount of cousins and stuff like that but well he, but he was never able to he was never able to really maintain good relationships with them. So when he was with the kidney dialysis, he was a little sad because we were not really talking. Oh. And my brother and sister and he were kind of, you know, and then my mom, my dad were separated, but they still, there was this thing there. So it was kind of sad to see him like that. Hmm. And then when I came back, we sort of, you know, I was, I have to admit, uh, I was a bit of a disappointment to my father. He was a very studious guy. And I like, I like sports and entertainment, but he likes studying and this sort of thing. Well, well he'd be very tough. happy to know, you know that you know a little bit about everything. He, <laughs> yeah, so I suppose let's, so. So let's I pick a topic so. out of a hat. So, sure. Uh, I was going to say why why Pete was talking. Yeah. Pete mm -hmm. was talking. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of people probably wondering, watching and saying, oh, what's Pete talking to his family and different mm -hmm. things and where his father came from? Because he wants to do, he's planning to do a movie. Yeah, I'd he love wants to. to put that together. Oh, yeah, we were talking about yes. that. Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to do. I'd love to do maybe a mini series about how my father, mother, and father came to Canada. What were the hardships? Because there are a lot of hardships. I mean, I mean, I'm I'm sort of. Uh, uh, my friend Colin tells me that I'm a little tough on my father, uh, but but they but there were a lot of hardships. There are a lot of hardships that my father went through, and uh, that my mother went through, and then. When they got together, what was it like to adapt to a country for immigrants and then have children? Because like at the dinner table, like my brother, sister, and I, we'd be speaking in a different language to them. Mm -hmm. They'd be like, "You Canadians," we're like, "You, you foreigners." Because <laughs> <Right. laughs> they're weird. Like I mean, West Indians from a Canadian perspective, and for them, from from their perspective, we are strange. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of fun uh, with that as well. But that's got to be difficult. It is really difficult. For, it is tough. Uh, any family, mm -hmm. you have kids and yeah. your kids grow up and they're really a different kind of person. Different than, kind of people. Our, our morals are different. We grew up, we were, we were one of the first generations to grow up with t television as much as with color television. I mean, yeah, it wasn't just a, a, right. a, 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 a cultural difference, but yeah. it was like a technology that's difference. Right. Well, that's the, when the big generation mm -hmm. gap was, because you had the first TV generation mm -hmm. kids who are quite alien from their parents, That's no matter right. what culture you came That's from. That's right, because because we watched a lot of television mm -hmm. and it formed a lot of our viewpoints. You know, like when Colin and I talk, we talk a lot about our references come from TV because we, we unfortunately did not read as much. I read a lot more now, but when I was a boy, I didn't read that much. I read about athletes and I read about, and I read about, you know, famous people, but I didn't read that much. So, so, uh, my father was like, why don't you guys read more? Because we're watching TV. We've got color TV. What do you need those books for? Are you kidding me? You know? Well, so, yeah. you know, <clears throat> but uh, but uh, just as a sideline, I am a I am a collector of sports memorabilia. So okay, I've got go. some stuff. And first so show your jacket my, there, Pete. Oh, <laughs> this is my this right. is my this is my roots jacket from yeah. it's a 1998 roots jacket. I picked it up in the Kensington market. Yeah, yeah. And this is my uh, this is a this is a 75th anniversary Montreal Canadiens jersey. It's a 1940s. A it's a 1940s one. It's Look got the that. it's got that. the really nice uh, uh, V for a vintage. Uh, it's a uh, it was for, for the 75th anniversary you, of the NHL. Know, they made some jerseys. So you can cut that. You can cut off that uh, that decal. Uh, turn it upside down, and it'll and it'll you can no. pretend you're the assistant captain. No right? way. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. So I've got that, and I've also got this is my prize. I can't show all of them today, but my prized yeah. possession, which actually, which actually kind of mesmerizes people. People get all starry eyed. This is my this is my Bobby Orr. This is a nineteen seven. This is a remake of a nineteen seventy four fiftieth uh, anniversary jersey. See, they wow. didn't have the names on the back then, but for the Stanley Cup, they put the names on the back. Oh, look at that. It's got an assistant captain's thing. Nice. 
It's got the 50th anniversary patch you can see there. It's got the number on the side. It's got the big B there. And it's uh, and it's even got a fighting hook for those guys who play hockey. I a play what? hockey, so it's what got a it? fighting hook. What is that this, for? A fighting hook is something you, you tie onto your pants so that when you're fighting, your shirt they, doesn't they, get taken they over can't your head. Pull it off. Yeah, yeah, they can't oh. pull it off. So I so I've got this this one. I usually get people get emotional, they cry, they offer me money. So I don't wear it very often because it's kind of emotional for me. I'm a big Bobby R fan, so you know he's kind of very cousin. emotional. Huh? He's my cousin, my fourth cousin. Really? You're kidding me. Someone like wow. fourth cousin. That's yeah. amazing. So I do that as a sideline. And uh, I collect stuff, and so All right. so uh, that's kind of the things I do. But I uh, but I love being around you guys. I love being here. It's a lot of fun, and I uh, really that seriously, I enjoy that channel very much. I think um, you know it could be built up. I think we could do a lot more, and hopefully we can uh, realize our potential because uh, I think Hugh has brought together so many amazing people, and we're lucky, you know, that we're be being brought together in this. Because uh, life is life is a lot more than going to work. You got a job. You go to work. You come home. You watch TV. Getting ideas together and bringing coming together with people who have great ideas is very important. And, and coming so, together with you know, with Peter Ross, which he's got to come back and uh, give us an update on when he gets that movie could, yeah. start to go. Plus, we didn't even get to draw a topic from the, the hat and just let oh. Pete, Pete talk about it for half an no, hour. Well, he already well, he, he talked. Well, he, I think. I'm one of those people. If you don't stop me from talking, it kind of you know. Well, we gotta stop you it, interrupts, <laughs> it interrupts people. So. Okay. Well, yeah. well we're going to so, stop you now, but thank okay. you, Pete, for coming. Thank it's you. Peter Rose, you know, and um, we'll be right back with our next guest.